In the previous video, we learned about watchers in Vue. In this video, let's understand some finer details about the same topic. To ensure we remember the usage of watchers, let's add a watcher for a new data property. I'm going to define a property called movie and set it to an empty string. In the template, let's add an input element and bind movie to the input using the vmodel directive. Input type is equal to text, vmodel is equal to movie. Next, in the watch object, let's add the movie property. Movie, and this is a function. It receives the new value as its argument. Within the function body, Let's assume we are calling an API with the updated value. So console log calling API with movie name is equal to the new value. If we now save the file and head to the browser, we should have the input element. If I type something in the console, we can see the text calling API with movie name is equal to B. If I type Batman, calling API with movie name is equal to Batman. Now this works fine, but if you've noticed, the watcher executes only when the data has changed. So in the data property, if I set movie to Batman and head back to the browser, refresh the page, you can see that the API is not called even though the movie name exists. Often with web applications, you might want to call an API to fetch some data when the page has loaded, even with an empty string as the movie name in our example. Well, Vue has that covered. You can specify a property called immediate and set it to true if you want a watcher to be run on page load. However, that requires us to change the watcher syntax just a tiny bit. Let's understand. At the moment, the movie watcher is a function. We begin by changing that into an object. The object will contain a property called handler, which is the function we have defined earlier. So cut and paste. But what this object syntax allows us to do is specify another property called immediate and set it to true. This will basically inform view that the handler function should be run initially on page load as well. So if we save the file and head back to the browser, you can see that on page load, we are calling the API with movie name equals Batman. So this is the first detail to make note of. The immediate property which runs the watcher handler on page load. The second detail about watchers is with regards to objects and arrays. Let's understand with an example. I'm going to define another data property called movie info. This is an object with two properties, title, an empty string, and actor, again, an empty string. In the template, I'm going to bind both these properties to separate input elements using the vmodel directive. So make a copy of the input and change movie to movie info dot title, and the second one, movie info dot actor. Finally, let's add a watcher for the movie info object to detect changes. So movie info, which is an object and contains a handler property, which is a function. The function receives the new value as an argument. Within the function body, let's simply add a log statement. Calling API with movie title is equal to new value dot title and actor is equal to new value dot actor. New value would be the updated movie info object 
and hence we access .title and .actor. If you now save the file and go back to the browser, we should have two more input elements corresponding to movie info title and actor. If you now start typing in a value in the two fields, you can see that the watcher is never called. This is because a watcher by default will not watch for changes in deeply nested properties of an object. In our case, the movie info object. To ask view to monitor the properties of an object on the watcher, we specify a property called deep and set it to true. If we now go back to the browser, start filling in the title and the actor, you can see the watcher code is executed. Now this behavior holds good when mutating arrays as well. Let's quickly go through an example. I'm going to define another property called movie list and set it to an array of two strings, Batman and Superman. In the template, I'm going to add a button to push another movie into the list. So div tag, a button, the text is going to be add movie. On click of this button, movie list dot push Wonder Woman. In the watch object, we can add a watcher for this array property. Movie list is an object, handler is a function which gets the new value as its argument and we simply log to the console the updated list. If we save the file and go back to the browser, you should be able to see the add movie button. However, if I click on the button, the watcher handler is not executed. To make this work, we again need to set deep to true on the watcher. Deep true, save the file and if we now retry, we see the updated value logged to the console. Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman. So if you want to watch an object or an array and you're mutating them instead of returning a new reference, you need to make use of the deep property in the watcher. However, if you return a new reference, the deep property is not required. So for example, let me change the click handler on the button to movie list is equal to movie list dot concat and the argument is an array. And let's also comment out the deep property in the watcher. If we now go back to the browser, refresh and click on add movie, the watcher handler gets executed since array.concat returns a new array and does not modify the same existing array. So immediate and deep. These were the two details about watchers I wanted to help you understand in this video. All right then, with that, we have pretty much covered all the fundamental concepts in view. Now it's finally time to start learning about the component architecture in view and all the details that revolve around it. Let's start learning about components from the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.